Hello, welcome to the European Open Briefing for Tuesday, May the 30th. I'm Rafi Boyajian, currency analyst at XM.com, and we're going to be looking at what's happening in the currency markets today. So the euro is back in focus this morning, uh, and there's several factors affecting the single currency. Uh, we've got some fresh concerns about uh, Greece. Uh, it follows uh, some uh, reports in the German press that said that the Greek government is willing to forego its next uh, bailout payment uh, if creditors do not agree uh, to a debt relief for Greece. Uh, there's also some worries about Italy, uh, both about the, its banking system after two more Italian banks uh, last week uh, requested uh, help uh, and also uh, the former Italian Prime Minister uh, has raised um, has suggested that um, there might be uh, a snap general election in, in Italy uh, in uh, as early as September. Uh, and plus, we also had uh, Mario Draghi, the ECB president. Uh, he was testifying in the European Parliament yesterday. He uh, once again um, dismissed the idea that uh, the, the ECB would be withdrawing its uh, stimulus program anytime soon. Uh, also, the, the, the pound is uh, under pressure again today. Uh, we had another poll showing a uh, narrowing of the Conservatives' lead um, with Labour. Uh, so, of course, this is negative for the pound. Uh, and all of this has given rise to the yen and gold, both of which are uh, safe havens. Um, and the dollar is pretty much range-bound, uh, although uh, it did touch a fresh one and a half week low versus the yen uh, earlier today. Um, and in other currencies, the Australian dollar um, is a bit steadier today, although it did open lower, it has bounced back a little bit uh, following some uh, positive data out of Australia as well as uh, a slight increase in iron ore prices this morning. But let's start with the euro. We can see that the euro um, came close to dropping below the 1.11 level, touching 1.1109. Uh, we had Draghi's um, testimony in the European Parliament yesterday, uh, he said that uh, the ECB remains convinced that extraordinary amount of monetary stimulus is still needed for the Eurozone economy. Um, and But the, the main concern though has been uh, about Greece and Italy. Uh, the Greek government has denied reports in the German press that uh, it wants to forego or it is willing to forego its next uh, bailout tranche uh, if lenders do not agree to uh, debt relief. Uh, the Europe the Eurogroup, uh, which consists of the uh, Eurozone finance ministers and the IMF, they're due to meet in June to decide on whether or not Greece should get uh, debt relief. Um, so this is basically, uh, maybe this could be a tactic by the Greek government to pressure the, its lenders, but it's very unlikely that Greece would actually forego its debt relief because then it would have to... Um, uh, then it would not be able to meet its uh, um, bailout obligations. Um, but there's also worries about Italy now. Uh, the former Prime Minister has raised the prospect, uh, Matteo Renzi, um, who uh, potentially will run for re-election if there is a uh, snap general election. Uh, the, the current term ends uh, early next year, uh, but he suggested that maybe uh, they might call a snap election in September. And this is because the parties in Italy the main parties in Italy are getting closer to um, approving a, a change in, 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 to the electoral system. Uh, so the, the, mo the most likely outcome will be they will uh, choose a proportional represent representation system. Um, and this is, although this might be positive for Italy as it might lead to uh, more political stability, uh, it's still uh, just basically um, adding to the uncertainty over Italy. Uh, plus, we had two more Italian banks last week uh, seeking um, capitalization due to capital shortfalls. So all of this is basically weighing on the euro uh, this morning, although the euro has um, firmed a little bit from its earlier lows, currently trading around 1.1134. The pound was another currency under pressure earlier today. We had another poll. Um, although yesterday we had uh, most of the polls uh, did show that the Conservatives, although the Conservatives have narrowed their lead, it wasn't quite as bad as that one poll we had uh, out last Friday. Uh, but another poll this morning showed uh, 
um, six point lead for the conservatives uh, and this uh, drove the pound to uh, briefly below the 1.28 level although we see the pound has now um, rebounded sharply to above 1.2850 going into the European session. Um, and all of this uncertainty both over the UK, in Italy, Greece and uh, the, um, the, the Davish ECB, uh, we're seeing it's uh, helped uh, safe havens such as the yen and gold. Uh, we're seeing the dollar yen uh, back below the 111 level uh, to a one and a half week low. Um, and uh, the, the, the dollar is struggling to uh, gain traction against the yen even though we are expecting the Fed to raise rates in June and so it appears that this rate hike is mostly being priced in so um, investors are now going to be looking at uh, what the Fed will be saying and it's June meeting about future rate hikes uh, to get uh, to give them further direction um, although the dollar index of course is benefiting from the weaker euro and the pound uh, so that's doing a little bit um, uh, a little bit better uh, but gold we can see it's currently at a four week high of uh, it's about 1270 uh, dollars an ounce um, and that's because of that risk aversion that we have uh, this morning moving on to commodity currencies uh, DOZ has steadied a little bit although it did uh, slide uh, earlier today before bouncing higher again we uh, had Australian building approvals numbers earlier today uh, they rose by 4.4 percent month on month in April that beat expectations of three percent increase uh, but year on, on year it is still down 17.2 percent that's quite a big drop uh, and there are uh, growing concerns about uh, uh, the construction sector in Australia which appears to be slowing and that could weigh on GDP growth both in the first quarter uh, which is uh, out uh, due out next week and also uh, the second quarter which is still um, we're still in the second quarter uh, although uh, we did see high and uh, higher iron ore prices iron ore of course has fallen sharply over the past week uh, they'll be a little bit firmer this morning that could be due to low liquidity due to Chinese markets uh, still being close today but nevertheless that has helped the Aussie it's currently trading around 0 0.74 uh, 35 against uh, the dollar moving on to the, today's economic calendar we did have um, good Japanese data earlier today although that didn't really affect the yen very much we saw household spending uh, that was the main disappointment it came in weaker than expected both year on year and month on month uh, but the job applicants the ratio it rose to um, the low since the 19th uh, the highest in, since the 1970s and that sh indicates uh, a very tight uh, labor market uh, it means that there are um, less uh, uh, less uh, job vacancies to go um, um, sorry there are more job ap ap uh, vacancies to go for each uh, applicant uh, and the unemployment rate uh, it's already um, at a more than 20 year low at 2.8 percent in April retail sales were positive as well they rose 3.2 percent year on year versus expectations of 2.3 uh, percent uh, we also had uh, French GDP data which was revised up that did help the euro a little bit uh, although German import prices were disappointing uh, we had uh, Swiss, uh, Swedish GDP data which came in uh, sharply below expectations and that's why we saw the Swedish krona uh, fall back against the dollar and the yen uh, and the euro uh, this morning coming up later today we've got the economic sentiment index out of the eurozone um, but the main focus will be con personal consumption and income data out of the US later today that's it from me thank you very much for watching and have a great day